When I finally reveal the ending of the story, you're going to be so confused as to how police and investigators were not able to identify the cause of this man's death. Hi, my name's Yasmin and I make videos about topics that are scary, disturbing or true crime. If you'd like to follow along then please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up and we will get on with the rest of this story. On the morning of September 16th, 2010, Susie called her husband Greg Flanagan like she did every other morning while he was away for work during the week. Greg owned an oil land leasing business with his brother Michael and he would often leave his home in Lafayette in Louisiana every Monday to Friday and drive over three hours to Houston, Texas for work. He'd often stay at hotels and was only really home during the weekends, which is precisely why this call was so important to both him and his wife, because they barely got to spend any time together. Greg would never miss these calls, but that day the call rang out. Later that morning, there was a loud knock on the door of 348 at MCM Hotel Elegante in Beaumont, Texas. There was no answer, so they knocked even louder the second time again, but no answer. The third time the hotel manager unlocked the door using a spare key and they were just hit with this wave of warmth as soon as they opened the door. Then when they looked down at the floor, they saw Greg's body lying down on the green carpeted floor with his eyes closed and a cigarette wedged between his index finger and middle finger of his left hand. He was this awful bluish gray color and by just looking at him, you could tell that he was sadly deceased. Hotel staff rushed to call police and an ambulance and let Greg's wife Susie know as well about the awful news. When she asked what happened though, police really couldn't give her any answers. There was nothing that seemed suspicious about anything in his hotel room. From just looking at the scene, the carpet didn't have a speck of blood on it. Greg's cheek had a minor little scratch or scrape from him falling onto the floor but there were no obvious wounds visible to police at the time. There didn't seem to be any evidence that anyone had even come into the room, and if they had, they clearly didn't take anything because Greg still had $1,000 cash sitting in his wallet that was tucked in his back pocket of his pants. Police interviewed staff at the hotel and they interviewed guests, but no one really noticed any suspicious behavior or anything happening that was out of the ordinary. The next door guests were completely unaware that anyone was even staying in room 348. Due to no real red flags, police just chalked it up to death due to natural causes. Although Greg had no prior health conditions, he seemed to be a fit 55 year old man He'd smoke occasionally, he'd drink occasionally, which is why they thought that it was most likely a natural cause. Susie was also questioned about whether there was anything unusual about the scene, and the only things she said was that he never held a cigarette in his left hand, and that it was really unusual for the room to be so hot and muggy, because Greg really couldn't stand a hot room, especially when he was sleeping at night. He'd always have the air conditioning on. The body was referred to the chief medical examiner, Dr. Tommy Brown, for an autopsy. What Dr. Brown found made no sense given the circumstances that Greg's body was found in. Starting from the outside of Greg's body, there were no external injuries apart from the little scrape on his cheek and also a strange laceration to his scrotum and a little bit of bruising in the area that extended all the way to the right hip. But apart from that, externally, Greg's body had no evidence that anything had even happened to him. Of course, they also did an internal examination as well, and this is where things get a little bit strange. They found that he had multiple broken ribs, he had a lacerated liver, he had a lacerated stomach, and strangest of all, he had a hole in his heart in the right atrium. In fact, there was so much internal bleeding from the impact of whatever happened to him that it would have only taken 30 seconds for him to bleed internally to death. That's how extensive his organ damage was. 
These types of injuries are most consistent with people who have been in high impact crashes, or if they've been crushed by something really heavy, or if someone just beat them up. But again, as I said, there was nothing external on his body, so what on earth could have crushed him from the inside out? Dr. Brown ruled this as a homicide. There was no way Greg's body spontaneously developed these severe internal injuries without any external force. But what exactly crushed him? And how come he had no bruising anywhere on his body? Did someone beat him up and then bring him back to the hotel? Or did something fall on him at the hotel? These were all things that police had already gone through and they basically said that there was no evidence that he even left the room that night. The police department were absolutely adamant that this was not a homicide. But judging by what the autopsy actually revealed, Susie wasn't convinced at all. So she actually hired two private investigators to reveal what happened to her husband. And it took months for them to figure it out, but they did get to the bottom of it. The most unexpected finding led the private investigators to finally solve this case. The private investigators went back to the hotel room to just examine the furniture and the walls, and there was a very, very faint indentation on one of the walls. When they got a little bit closer to this indentation, they could see that there was a sort of like light pinky color on the wall, and when they touched it, they could actually feel that it was toothpaste which was covering a hole that spanned from the room 349-348. And this is what happened to Greg hours before his death. On the 15th of September, Greg finally finished work. He returned back to the Elegante Hotel in Beaumont, Texas, which was very familiar to him because he'd stayed there a number of times in the past. The staff knew him quite well, and he didn't really interact with anyone in the hotel. He really kept to himself and went straight to his room most of the time. Greg was really well versed in living this life out of a suitcase. He took off his work gear and threw it on the floor with all the rest of the dirty laundry, and it was so hot and muggy that he turned on the air conditioning before he hopped in the shower. After his shower, he put on some comfy clothes and he got some chocolate from the minibar and a pack of cigarettes ready for him on his bedside table. Also part of his routine, he laid out a towel on his bed for hygiene purposes so that when he would smoke in bed, he wouldn't actually get any of the ash on the bed sheets. He decided it was going to be a movie and relaxation night. So off he went to the microwave to pop some popcorn when suddenly the microwave caused a short circuit and all the power in his room got cut off. A maintenance worker was then sent up to his room to reset the breaker, which really didn't take very long and they left by 8.30 p.m. So Greg still had the whole night ahead of him. As soon as the maintenance worker left, he put on Iron Man 2 and laid down on his towel whilst forgetting to put the air conditioning on. But this didn't really seem to bother him for that moment. He lit up a cigarette using his right hand to hold it in place, and he settled in for what was supposed to be a restful night of snacking and watching a movie. And meanwhile, in the room next door, in room 349, there were two men staying there, and their names were Tim Steinmetz and Lance Mueller. They were electricians who were also staying at the hotel for work. And at night, they'd often meet up at one of their colleagues' rooms for drinking and just hanging out. That night, they all gathered in the room 349. And the night was still young. No one was really that drunk yet. They were just having a few drinks at this point. And Lance asked one of his friends if he could go down to his car and get his whiskey and also his 9mm Ruger pistol. So his friend brought these things back up to the room and Lance, for some reason, was playing around with the gun when he accidentally dropped it and upon impact of hitting the floor, the gun went off, firing a bullet straight into room 348, which was Greg's room. None of the men actually knew if there was anyone staying in room 348 because no one heard any sounds, no one saw anyone go in and out of the room ever, and after the gunshot, there was really no noise that came from that room, so they thought it must have been empty, let's just sweep it under the rug. 
No one really made a fuss about this because they thought, you know, it's just an accident, a bullet went into another room, what's the chance that it's going to hit someone? So they actually all left the hotel room and went downstairs to the bar area to continue their night of drinking. By sheer bad luck, that bullet went through the wall and entered Greg's body through his groin, traveling up his body, lacerating his internal organs all the way up until it exited through his heart, creating a hole in his right atrium. It's thought that when this happened, Greg possibly stood up and swapped the cigarette from his right hand to his left hand, because if you're going to use your dominant hand to say open a door or something, you're going to have it free, right? But there was really no time. The bleeding was so extensive that he would have died within 30 seconds, which is why he was found collapsed on the floor. I guess Lance didn't really want to be charged with anything extra for creating a hole in the hotel room wall. And also I guess he didn't actually know if there was anyone in that room and if it had harmed anyone. So he thought that he would just patch up the hole using light pink toothpaste, hoping no one would ever notice. If it wasn't for the private investigators, this case would have probably never been solved. In 2012, Lance was convicted of manslaughter and he was sentenced to 10 years in prison for his crime. And that is the end of the story. If you found that interesting, or if you'd like to hear more stories like this, then please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you in next week's video. Bye.